Hello and welcome back to the top 85 games for the BBC Micro video countdown series. In at number 22, it's Nevrion, or possibly Nevrion. To be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it, but I do know how to play it and I think it is an outstanding game. Uh, this was released in 1990, so one of the much later releases for the Beeb. Um, it actually came out for the BBC Micro and also for the uh, Archimedes um, around the same time. And it was developed by Graham Richardson, uh, originally published by Fourth Dimension and subsequently released by Superior uh, under their Play It Again Sam label, uh, Play It Again Sam 18. Now, Nev Nevrion, I'm going to call it Nevrion from this point onwards because that's, I think, how I pronounced it as a child. Uh, this is inspired by the famous arcade game R-Type, and I think it's fair to say that it is one of the few examples of a horizontal side-scrolling space shooter for the Beeb, and in my opinion, it has got some of the very best in-game graphics for any BBC Micro game. Uh, it's why I've brought it in at number 22 primarily, um, but it's also really good fun to play and we're going to take a look at it now. All right, let's start it up. So a bit of a backstory here, the Great Space War of 2100. Um, basically there's a big alien bad guy buried in a cavern and uh, we need to defeat it. Um, so you need to get through the various eight levels, different scenarios for the levels and uh, you're piloting a, a spaceship which can collect all kinds of power-ups um, and that enables you to get better and better weapons. So I'll be explaining that as we go along. So relatively straightforward controls for this one, left, right, up and down and fire pretty much. Um, you have a lot of settings that you can tweak for the game. Lovely, lovely little title there. I do like that. And you can already tell the quality of the graphics here. So yes, you can tweak the difficulty setting. I'm going to keep it on timid because it's me, but I am going to boast the uh, speed to fast because um, that makes it a slightly more fun game to play. Might reconsider that later, depending on how I get on. And here we go. Look at this. Great. This reminds me of uh, a later PC game, Major Striker. The graphics there are just fantastic. And that's just the very beginning, as you'll see. Uh, so stand by to enter the combat zone. I mean, look at the fonts here are just fantastic. Uh, the way that it just really gets you into the mood for the game. Some explosion sounds there. Here's our ship, which has a sort of blasting effect. And we're in. So uh, these bad guys, you've got to hit them twice uh, if you want to destroy them. And I think you have to destroy something like 10 of them before you get your first power up. Now you can tell that at the moment my gun is a bit sluggish. Uh, so actually getting the first power up is really the key to making any progress on, on, on the level because you need to get the rapid fire power up, which I've just about uh, <laughs> failed to pick it up. Brilliant. And that's my power gone. So if you've noticed already, bottom right, you've got a number of lives remaining, uh, represented by squares, and then you've also got the power bar there. Uh, each hit that your ship takes reduces the uh, square by a half. So um, yeah, you've basically got was it 10, 10 hits you can take before it's curtains. Um, you'll notice that the bad guys shoot those little white dashes which you have to avoid. I mean look at those boilers there just blasting out the fire. I love, I just love the graphics for this game so much. Um, they're just so creative and there are so many details in it as well that it just really, it's one of those games you can just keep playing it almost just to immerse yourself in the, in the sort of enjoyment of the artwork. I mean, you've got to admit this is the kind of graphics that you would probably expect to find on a on a more advanced sort of 16-bit system rather than an 8-bit one like the Beeb. I mean, look, look at it go. Um, and it plays really smoothly as well. Um, oh, dear, dear, I'm making very good progress here. Look, I've lost, was that three lives? Two lives, three lives already? Dear, oh, dear. Um, well, we'll try and at least get past this uh, first level. At the end of each level, there's a boss, um, which is always good fun. That's it. That's the R-type style of the game. So you see, when you get to the end of the level, there'll be some kind of big meanie that you've got to destroy um, but the way to uh, ensure success not that I'm really demonstrating it very well at the moment but the way to ensure success against the boss is to make sure that you get as many of these power-ups as you can now rapid fire really does help you because in addition to being easier to kill the bad guys and get more power-ups it also means you can actually start trashing some of the uh, stationary objects as well which really does help 
Now the game is quite sneaky because the the appearance of the power ups on the screen sometimes it puts them in in a location where actually you'll waste a load of power just trying to get to them. Right, I've got my front loaded shields now. They they don't make you invulnerable, but they do give you I think a, I can't exactly recall how it works, but it's something like every other shot or something. I think you manage to avoid losing power. Now I've got my gun droid here, so the power ups are coming thick and fast. And then the final power up that I need to get is the uh, the rocket launchers. Uh, if you see on the bottom left there, you've got um, some sort of display showing you the equipment that you've got. Right, I'm getting to the boss. This is the boss. Now we need to just blow out the center there, try and avoid getting shot. Now the nice thing about these rockets is that because they come from the top and the bottom, if you line your rockets up just ever so slightly above you, you can avoid getting shot. And there we go. That is the boss cleared. And we've got an extra life as well, so can't complain. So that's into the second level. Um, so we're still on the, uh, the same red, yellow, white color scheme here. Uh, because this is level level two now. Now, uh, if we get to level three, either by clearing this one or potentially by using some cheat codes, uh, we will get to the blue color scheme. Uh, and it's not just the colors that change, by the way. Neverion is incredibly creative, as we shall see. Um, everything changes. The the bad guys, the, the the stationary objects, all of it is different for every every couple of levels. Right, we need to clear through that. Uh, <laughs> managed to blow a hole in the force field and then hit the force field. Well done, me. Um, there's a bit of um, screen uh, differentiation going on there. So you've got the the standard Nevrion um, power bars, ship uh, level um, score, etc. Down the bottom in the blue, white, darker blue, cyan and blue, I should say. Um, but the colours above it, obviously, are in the red, white, yellow, and black. I always think these ones look a bit like microchips that you're destroying there. Oof, quite managed to clear myself. Now, yes, the key to get through those force fields is not to go through the med through the middle. Oof, got some kind of shelling device going on down there. Oh, and I'm in the... Oh, dear. That wasn't very sensible. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a little bit of creative editing here, and we're going to skip forward to level three. Uh, you need a passcode for this one. Uh, might leave the speed on medium this time, and it's Archie. It's a little reference to the uh, the Archimedes, which the game came out for at the same time, of course. Uh, here we go. So we're now on. Uh, we've now skipped forward two levels, so you will get to see a slightly different color scheme: uh, white, cyan, and blue with a black background. And uh, as I say, everything about the uh, the enemies and, and the look of the level changes at this stage. I like that, it's a sort of almost like a Bunsen burner flame at the back there. So you see we've got these almost sort of, I'm going to say sort of ice cube style bad guys. Um, and then you can see the stationary objects like the gun turrets. Even these guys look, the boilers have turned into sort of fire breathing dragons now, which I really like. Um, and it's a sort of more kind of asteroid feel now to this level. And some Some Greek columns as well, because why not? Um, oh, there's a sort of bomb, bomb hurling mushroom there, spinning turrets. Uh, these, I think, are the only bad guys that stay the same throughout the levels. These sort of um, they shoot at you, but they don't move. Not really sure. Uh, they're the sort of least threatening of the bad guys, really. Um, but the hardest to clear all of them in order to get a power up. Uh, that's why, because because you have to really move around to get all of them. I do like those dragons, they look quite comical, and even their little eyes move as well. Ah, well that wasn't such a good run through. Hoping that we might at least get to see the boss at the end of uh, level three. Um, I'm probably going to uh, apply some more creative editing later so we can get to see some more levels, just so you get a feel for the different types of um, level and, and the, and the, uh, the artwork. Because as I say, it just changes so dramatically with each, each couple of levels. Um, and my personal favourite uh, is the is the last level, um, where you uh, basically enter the, the 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 cave, the cavern with the uh, the alien beast. Um, that one it really is uh, dramatic. So um, yeah, we definitely need to see that one. Let's just blow up this uh, force field generator here. Um, the mushroom. There you go. See, rap rapid fire really does make all the difference with this game. 
Um, yes, I think I was tr I was saying earlier, just before we got to the boss, that uh, the equipment bar, you can see that you get those little arrow marks on the bottom left. So apart from rapid fire, which you only need to collect one power up for, uh, the other power ups you need you need um, two sorry the other bits of equipment you need two power ups in a row before you get them so um, in order to get my gun droid I'm going to need another power up I've already got one uh, so if I pick that one up now I'll get my gun droid uh, oh no sorry I misspoke there I needed one more so I must have already collected two for my shield there we go so you've got the gun droid the gun droid is a really good assistant because it kind of gives you double double rapid fire. So that really does help you to clean, clear out the meanies. Oh, here we go. It's boss time. I don't, I've got very much power left, though, so I don't know how long I'm going to last. Uh, now, the key is to really just make sure you position yourself well so that you can avoid uh, the various obstacles. And as I say, with the rocket launchers, it really does help because you can just almost cheat, really. You can just line yourself up slightly underneath it and blast it away. And there we go. That's level three clear. And a bonus life as well. I was just saying, uh, Nevrion's pretty generous on the lives front. Uh, not only do you get a decent number of lives, uh, but I think it also, the game has something like three continues as well, or three credits for continue in the sort of arcade style way, uh, which, you know, gives you a fair, a fair chance to make progress without having to use level skip codes. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, I think it's a fairly sympathetic game to the player. Uh, obviously some people con consider the use of continues to be cheating. Um, well, not cheating, but at least it's not really sort of a true reflection of how well you can play the game, as it's it's kind of simulating the idea of you know just putting more money into the machine if you were playing it in the arcades, I suppose. Um, a very very early precursor to the uh, the in-game purchase. <laughs> you can be better at the game if you can pay uh, to keep playing. But um, yeah, I think overall it's a fairly it's a fairly uh, I won't say relaxed game. It can be pretty stressful, particularly when you get to the boss. Um, but it is—it's fair. I think it's fair to the player. Uh, I am playing on timid mode. The only difference, really, between the different difficulty settings uh, is that—is that—is the amount of power that your ship has. So you'll—you'll you'll have seen I get um, ten hits basically before its curtains for me. Uh, if you play it on Ace, which is the very hardest setting, you uh, you can only sustain four hits before you die, so that really is quite tough. Um, and I have to say, not overly enjoyable. I think you have to be a very very good player of Nevrion before you really want to play it at that level. Um, and it's fair to say I'm not. Uh, so let's let's skip forward now. I think to level five. So we use the password of Stereo for this one. Now the idea here is that we've uh, we've cleared the asteroid and we're now on the planet's surface. So it's got an almost sort of orchards and gardens look to it in what I would call the uh, the crazy rider colour scheme of red, green, and white uh, on a on a black background here. So we're flying in. Oh, I was wrong. It's not it's not ten hits, is it? It's actually twelve because there's three. Uh, six squares down the bottom times two is, is 12 obviously so yes actually timid mode it's 12 hits so I, sh I should have said these bad guys by the way look an awful lot like sour apple hard-boiled candy sweets as me comparing uh, graphics to sweets again which you will recall i was doing that quite a lot in the review of pandemonium it's just the way my mind works um yes i do like i do like the uh, the graphics for this uh, this level in particular it's it's kind of almost like a sort of fantasy kingdom that we're flying through here um, albeit with force field generators oh right yes well i managed to crash into it just slightly before i managed to blow it up so that didn't help um yeah there we go the sour apple sweets are back um when they when the when the bad guys move in that sort of circular formation it is really quite difficult to kill all of them because you, they've almost gone over your head before oh dear oh, this is terrible look i'm down look at all the hits i've taken yeah it's really quite hard to clear them out of the way oh dear really not making very much progress on this level at all I think I did set it back on fast again, which is probably contributing. I, I find it more fun to play on fast because it, you know, really does make the game fly through. But um, at the same time, obviously, it does make it that little bit more difficult to play. Um, you can put it on slow, so uh, the default is medium. If you put it on slow, I, it's it's a very, a very sedate game, but it has its advantages. Um, it at least gives you the opportunity to kind of explore the levels at a slightly slower pace to understand where everything is 
also really helpful for spotting the uh, the sweet spot for where to position yourself when it get, when you get to the end of level boss as well. Um, so it can be useful from that point of view. But uh, as a as a sort of overall game speed um, for playing, slow is not not much fun. Now, interestingly, there's uh, another option on the game but to toggle between low and high resolution. Now, this is actually on low resolution. Um, if you switch it to high resolution, at least on the emulator, it just seems to shrink the amount of space on the screen that's uh, visible. Oh, look at this! There's so much going on. Are oh, we getting to the bad? We're getting to the big boss now? Oh, wow! I've only got half a uh, power left, and it's curtains. Didn't do, do, do too well there. Managed to get to the boss and then immediately died. But yes, um, I don't know if anyone in the comments wants to reflect on why the high resolution, the so-called high res um, option, shrinks the screen down. I'm, I'm not sure if perhaps it was designed for a particular kind of monitor uh, back in the day. Perhaps the perhaps the high res mode worked better on on monitors with a better resolution than than the, the trusty cub. But uh, certainly in emulation mode, um, low res. Paradoxically, uh, is uh, is is the not paradoxically, um, counterintuitively, low res is the better version to play it on because it, it uses up uses more screen real estate, makes it a more uh, engaging game and doesn't make it look quite so squished as it does in the high res mode. There's also an option to play in monochrome. Again, I suspect that was an option for people that didn't have a color monitor, which included me and my uh, on my Acorn Electron. I didn't have a color monitor; it was just a two-tone. Uh, black and green screen. So I think the monochrome uh, version of Nevrion just looks better when you when you're playing on a, a two-color screen. Um, but yes, again, on emulation mode, uh, you want it on full color to really get the richness of the graphics, um, which I have to say is it's it's far and away the uh, the most impressive part of of Nevrion. Okay, well we're going to skip forward now to level seven, which is the Alien Beast. Uh, with the code name of Rebel, and uh, I have to say these are my favourite of the levels, um, mainly because of the uh, the end of level boss. And we switch to a pink and white and red, uh, or not pink, magenta, uh, red and white colour scheme now. And again, the graphics will transform all together. Now we're basically inside the beast, so you can see it's got this very sort of visceral, organic look to the uh, to the level with these um, pink polos here, just knocking out the middle of the pink polos. Uh, and uh, yes, you don't get the stationary um, obstacles in this one, really it's just a case of flying through the beast, blowing up those bonefish there, um, in order to yeah really take on the end of level boss, which is what the game ultimately builds up to. Um, I have to say, back in the day, I used to skip forward to this level a lot because I, I just enjoy the graphics of this level. And and actually, this is what the cover art for the game uh, shows you on the front cover. It's the you know that's what um, that's what you would have seen on the box and thought, yeah, that, I, I want to play that level because that's what that's what it shows on the cover. And Neverion is one of those rare examples of a Beeb game where the cover actually is the in-game graphics because they are just that good. Um, it didn't really need uh, impressive artwork to, to uh, show it off or, or in, entice you to buy it because the graphics really do stand alone in their own right. Here we go. Here is the end of level boss. He is awful and I'm dead. Um, it is very hard work to defeat uh, the end of level boss, on uh, certainly on when you're playing it on fast. Um, to be honest, it's still pretty challenging on medium. Uh, but we will give it another try and see whether or not we can make any better progress this time around. Just dispatch these pink polos again. But yeah, I mean, I mean you, you, it's only when you really sort of sit back and, and almost just bask in the uh, the game itself that you just look at the detail, especially the the top and bottom of the of the level itself. I mean, that's just glorious artwork there. I mean, Graham Richardson did an absolutely stunning job with this game. It's such a shame, in a way, that it, it came out in 1990 because it, it clearly showed that, that this is the this is the quality of game that you really could achieve on on a BBC Micro. Um, you know, fast, smooth gameplay with amazing in-game graphics. But I suspect that quite a few people who had a B probably never played Neverion because by 1990. Um, a lot of people probably had moved on to other machines. Um, 
main reason I know of Nevrion is because I had a Beeb until pretty late. I didn't transition to a PC until much later. And so by 1990, was still very much... Um, oh, I thought I was doing better there, but not quite. Yeah, 1990, I was still very much a, uh, a Beeb aficionado and uh, was very much um, engaged in playing Beeb games. And so, yeah, Nevrion, I remember um, having the uh, the original um, game on, on disc, not a copy. It was... a uh, it was one I owned, the official version of, uh, published edition from 4th Dimension. Um, and yeah, just really, really good. So um, yes, to anyone who's watching this review, who's never played Nevrion before, because, you know, say, in 1990, probably may not have continued to have a beep, please do go and uh, seek this one out on the uh, Complete BBC Games archive, BBC Micro Games archive, because it is absolutely well worth it. I mean, if this, uh, even just watching the graphics in, in this video, I would hope would uh, pique your interest um, and really just demonstrates what was possible uh, on the Beeb, uh, graphics-wise. And as I say, it's not just the graphics. I mean, that is what really does propel it to spot 22 for me. But at the same time, it isn't just a feast for the eyes. It's a really enjoyable game. Um, you know, it's, it's got a good gameplay dynamic. Um, I like the R-type style games anyway. And uh, yeah. Right, we're going to give the boss one more try here, and oh, I made a bit more progress, but not quite enough. So I'm going to just do creative editing now. We're going into slow mode, um, and hopefully this way I can actually work out where I need to be. Okay, it's those bombs that are really doing me the damage. So we just take out the eye stalks, and then just avoid that um, grenade launcher there. Okay, so we've still got a gun turret coming out of the veins at the top there. So I need to make use of my rockets, I think, to really deal with this. I uh, just want to avoid getting blasted. Okay, rocket launch. And again, rocket launch. Okay, only one bit of the bad guy left. Okay, just need to time it. Not quite. Oh! Oh, I've only got one, one hit. One half of a power cube. Oh, that was, a, that was a hit. Come on. I just need one more rocket. There we go. I mean, I had to do it on slow mode, so it's not it's not necessarily the greatest victory there. But there you go. That is uh, that is Nevrion. That's, uh, that's played it through to the end. And uh, that's what it takes to defeat the end of level boss. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, this review of Nevrion. As I say, it's probably a game that has passed a lot of people by. Um, but it is outstanding. I mean, to have a game like that with graphics like that, that aren't just part of a splash screen or you know a, a, a bit of artwork that shows up on the screen before going into the game. You know, having artwork like that throughout the entire game, um, just it really is an impressive achievement from Graham, Rich, uh, Graham Richardson there. Um, outstanding work. So yes, do seek it out if you've not played it before. And uh, anyway, we're going to call it a day there for this review. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the review. hope you've enjoyed Nevrion. And uh, until the next time, goodbye.